Okay, we are going to talk about chain dimensioning. So we'll have an exercise called chain dimensioning. And what we're going to do is create some a set of steps with a one inch rise and a two inch run. It'll be three inches tall. And we're going to learn to create a local axis system. This will be your part number, so I will copy that from my part number. And I added the word detail here, as from this point on, you may only see detail. Detail is the part. The reason why they call it the detail is the actual physical part that has the dimensions on it that define the size and shape of it. So a detail part is what it's often referred to out in the design. And we're going to learn to create the local axis system and do a chain dimension drawing and understanding of tolerance buildup. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll go create a part and create a sketch. No, we're not. We are going to rename the part, go to properties, and change the name. Hit OK. Make sure that the name changed in the right one and that the name and the top tab changed, which it did. We're going to talk about creating a local axis. The local axis is defined at a coordinate of 0, 2, 2 on the YZ plane. So back to Katia, what I want to do is create an axis, and it should be in my standard tab. And I don't see it down here below should be down there but it's also in my action pad if you right click anywhere on the screen you can go to uh, display and display the action pad and inside my action pad I have a local axis system but before I create the local axis system I want to create the point of where the local axis is and the point coordinates given to me again were 0 comma 2 comma 2 so I'd like to identify with you how to create a point. You simply, it defaults to coordinates because that's the most common one used. We're going to go 0 in X, 2 inches in Y, 2 inches in Z. Select OK. A point is on the screen and I know it's barely visible. There it is. It might be actually easier to pick off the specification tree. If you look on the left of the specification tree, I'm showing you the coordinate location of that point. We need an axis on that point. So we can now go to the absolute axis, or sorry, axis system and click a position. I'm going to click this point over here and it creates what's called a local axis or in some cases the part axis. I'll select OK. I'm going to expand the tree. The absolute axis is the 0, 0, 0 origin. And the axis system 2 is an axis built from the absolute axis. You'll notice that when I zoom in on the axis a bit, the axis highlighted in blue was the original absolute axis. It is also dashed, letting me know it's an inactive axis axis. So if I were to create a point coordinate again, it would not reference this axis, rather the axis that has just been created, which is axis system number two. This axis needs to be renamed, so I'm going to click on it, right click and go to properties, and go to feature properties and find the feature name, and we're going to call that local axis. or part axes. The reason I put both names in there is just so you'd be familiar with the two names that it's most commonly referred to, local axis or part axis. This allows me to build a part in its true coordinates. So I want to start getting familiar with working off the axis system. For example, if you're going to build a car, you could build the door, the hood, the trunk, all in its true coordinates in perspective of 
an axis system that we're all measuring from using the absolute axis as an index point. Measuring everything from the absolute axis to true coordinates, you can assemble the part and the parts will land right where they're supposed to land because they were built in the proper location. All right, so now we don't pick the YZ plane off of here. We pick the YZ plane here on the new axis that I've created. Make sure that the local axis is highlighted when you pick on that plane. Then we can go into sketch like we always have. Um, but one thing's going to be weird is that it's going to want to try and fit all in and always show the axis. So what I like to do before I get in there is hide that absolute axis. In fact, if I were to go to view, fit all in right now, it's as if I never even created another axis. And I could do everything similar to what I've done on the previous exercises. Let's go into this axis system here. I'm going to turn my grid back on so we can see it. Again, remember, don't work on the axis system. If you work on the axis system, it tends to lock it up, and then I can't move or change any of my datums. So how do I work with that? Well, I do the same thing I've been practicing. I'll start at the one and one, and it said the direction said that I'll move this tool palette out of the way. The direction said that this part was three inches tall. So I'm going to go three inches high. Two inches is the run. One inch is the rise. So I'm just going down one and over two. Down one and over two. Down one and close the shape. I'm going to use auto constraint. But uh, I might not have mentioned this earlier. I don't have this active. I click off in no man's land. Highlight everything. Make sure everything's highlighted. And then find the auto constraint option. In the auto constraint option, you can now add the datums, which will be here and here. And I'm going to leave it on chain dimension because the exercise to did, said to do this in chain. Let's try and hit chain and see what we get. All right. Notice that this makes it nice and easy for me to make these all equal. Right? So I'm going to switch this over here. Chain dimension is arrowhead to arrowhead or symbol to symbol. It also is telling the shop to measure from here to here and then measure from here to here and then measure from here to here. Okay? So it seems fine. Let's go ahead and uh, use my right click and go to properties. Dang it. Let's see if I can auto search this and make this stick out a little bit better by going to uh, right click again on it and go to properties and under the graphics tab that's this one here under the graphics tab change that line weight thickness to something thicker where we can see it okay and I'll turn the grid back off now what I want to do here is go to change this to zero and change this to zero by creating it this way I'm allowed to move that part free will okay the only problem is I don't have any datums established all right for this particular model we're not going to establish any datums I'll get into this later on another demo we have no datums on this model because I'm controlling it off of these values which allow me to double click it at any time and type in a different value. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. 
Now I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to double double click this and type in equals and I'm going to pick the first constraint. Select OK. I just linked this constraint to this one. There's a little FX you can barely see, but it's on there. It says FX and it's linking it to that. Again, if I double click this, it's now gray. It won't let me edit the value. See this last one? I could edit the value to 3 and it will move it to 3. But if I double click that and type in equals and I pick the first one and select OK, it's going to be whatever this one is. So this one and this one are now linked to this one. If I change this to 3, all of them become 3 inches that are linked to it. I'll hit undo because I want to leave it at 2. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to link this one to this one. Now the reason why I'm doing it, the order I'm doing it is this is my datum. This is the first dimension off the datum. Everything else will be linked to that. So we double click, type in equals, and click on this one. Select OK. You can even equal one that equals another. You can pick the one that has a function. If I double click on this and hit equals, I can pick on this one and select OK. All right, now I want to talk about the tolerancing and why we don't do this. So on your questions here, it's going to ask understanding tolerance buildup. So we've been talking about the tolerance block having a 30 thou tolerance. If I got an ANSI drawing, plus or minus 30 thou at two place dimensions. This is three, four place dimensions, but we'll just pretend like it's two places. The drawing itself will be two places. So I'm going to put in another dimension on this line. Does anybody know why it's purple? Again, I'll put a dimension on this line. It's purple. And the reason being is it's over constrained. On the top, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is already 6. By adding another one, it's saying, hey, you're, you're double dimensioning. Because I can't double click on this and change this to 8. If I change that to 8, how can this be 8 and these 3 be 2? It's not going to be able to handle it. Therefore, I'm over constrained. Same with the 3 inch dimension. I can't change this to 4 and have these be at 1 inch a piece. It just mathematically won't work. And that's what defines over constraint. So I'm going to double click this 8 inch dimension. I'm going to make it a reference call out and hit OK. When I make it a reference call out, it's adding 2 plus 2 plus 2 and it's telling me that it's 6 inches. If I double click on this one, I can make that a reference call out and now the part is no longer purple. If your part's purple, you must address that. You will not be able to change any parameters until you fix the elements to not be purple anymore. We need a profile to be green and be fully constrained. So, chain dimensioning can cause buildup. So misuse of chain dimensioning may cause tolerance buildup. For example, the direction said to make this part 3 inches tall. Also, engineering tolerance is plus or minus 30 thou, which means this 1 inch dimension could be 1.03. If I have that in the shop, and the shop makes this dimension 1.03, that means this one could be 1.03, and this one could be 1.03. And you can see that the overall height is now at 3.09. That is called tolerance buildup. I just made that part more than 3 inches tall and more than the maximum 3.03 .03 because of the way I dimensioned it. So it's important to understand how to dimension or in this case constrain your profile. Same thing with this one. The maximum number it could be is 2.03. Well, if these three are all 2.03, you're going to add almost a tenth of an inch to your tolerance. And I got this number here just as a reference so you could see what happens with the tolerance buildup. Now, this also could be a worst case scenario at 
which means this takes it all the way down to 5.91. It's not even close to being to the six inches anymore. It's almost a tenth of an inch short. Same thing with the height. What if the height was all short on the mistake and they went 0.97? This is 0 0.979797. According to the way I constrained it, they're within engineering tolerance because all the dimensions I gave them are still within 30 thou. But you'll notice that here, this is significantly less than the three inches. Okay, so 30 thou tolerance would be the worst case scenario. 2.97 would be the smallest height I could accept. So when you do chain dimensioning, that's what can happen from the tolerance buildup. We're going to create a drawing, and you're going to create the answer to the tolerance buildup on a drawing sheet. So you'll always have that to fall back on. I'm going to change this back, though, to the numbers I wanted, which was 1 inch and 2 inches. From here on out, you probably could create the drawing without me. I'm going to go ahead and continue on and create the drawing in another video. If you want to do the drawing without me and come back and check my video, that's fine. I'm going to stop the video here, and then I'll continue on making my um, drawing.